So I first enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1985. Um, I came in and my recruiter he said he was going to put me in an MOS that was not traditionally for women. You know, 1985, that was a ground support equipment mechanic. You know, it was not a traditional MOS for us. So that's how I, I started out, uh, worked in a headquarters and maintenance squadron. And now I'm the director of alleged affairs here in headquarters of Marine Corps, uh, providing liaison over to Capitol Hill and the Congress on behalf of the Commandant. I remember when I was in boot camp, um, we were right about to uh, go on the grinder to, for practice for uh, graduation. And my drill instructor said, look over, look over there. And we saw uh, another drill instructor and she had the NCO sword and she was wearing it. And you know, we were recruits, we didn't know what was going on. We were like, mm, what? And they're like, they let her wear the sword. And it was 1985 that uh, women first were allowed to start wearing the sword. And uh, I remember our drill instructors came to the squad bay and they had this announcement that Gail Reels had been selected by a promotion board to be a Brigadier General. And quite frankly, the recruits, we didn't quite understand the magnitude of it. We didn't understand that this was the first time that a woman had been selected by a promotion board to be a Brigadier General. So quite frankly, during my career, i had always thought it was possible for a woman to be a general. It was just um, the, the way it was in the Marine Corps that women could aspire to that. Um, Obviously, the women who had gone before me didn't have that familiarity, didn't have that history to inform you know, their future possibilities. So I would just say from the very first time when I was at boot camp, as we marked some of these milestones, it just starts opening more and more possibilities of what women contribute to the United States Marine Corps and who we are. I look back at um, you know some of the folks who have gone before us, but like Barbara Dulinsky, she was one of the first women Marines who ever deployed to a combat zone, 1967 in Vietnam. You know, imagine getting off that plane just south of Saigon and trying to figure it out, all that great uncertainty. But just like I experienced in boot camp or in my deployments, when she got off that aircraft, she was going to be part of a team. And that's how we all become successful is when we're part of a team, I think. I just look back even at Marine Corps aviation. We all know who A.A. A. Cunningham is. We should all know who Frank Peterson is. We should know who Sarah Deal is. We should know who Nicole Mann is. You know, as students of history, when we collectively understand all of these histories, we better appreciate the legacy that's been passed on to us. I think one of the things I've noticed over the past couple decades, two decades of war, is that we have leaders who are willing to recognize unique contributions of all of their Marines, whether it's contributions in female search teams, female engagement teams, lioness programs. I think that's second nature to Marines. We grow up naturally thinking about combined arms and bringing all the capabilities of the MAGTAF to bear. Everybody has something to contribute. Everybody brings their unique capabilities to the table. And I think we breed leaders who look at all of their Marines and try and take advantage of all their capabilities. And I think that over the past couple decades, that has just been reinforced with some of our accomplishments in both peace and war. I think times like this in Women's History Month, we will look back at our history and we'll look back at our different milestones and how things have changed over time. One of the other things we have to look at or the constants that were the same when I joined the Marine Corps in 1985 and they're just as the same as I'm sure there's recruits arriving at MCRD San Diego and MCRD Paris Island today, that you will be challenged. If you wanna be a Marine, we're gonna hold you to a high standard. But the good news is we're gonna surround you with a team that's gonna help set conditions for success. And we're gonna help you make those standards. We're gonna help help you achieve those standards and we're gonna do it as a team. That's remained constant throughout the history of the Marine Corps.